This is the Helltech Wi-Fi LoRa 32 expansion kit. I got it with the uh, touchscreen, GPS, and all already assembled, and it came with the battery as well. These are inexpensive. They come in this aluminum enclosure. I Right now, I think you can only get them directly from Helltech. I've ported the Blackout Comms firmware to it. I've had a lot of time with it, and I'm going to tell you what I've learned about it. As I said, it's got a touchscreen GPS. I found both of those to work quite well. It's essentially the Helltech V4 mounted inside this enclosure. They've designed it for adding sensors and things like that. Currently I only see the option for a couple, a couple of sensors and a buzzer. It looks like they're offering something similar to the rack WizBlock in this form that you can stick in your pocket and use it um, like a standalone communication device uh, with an integrated touchscreen. I would consider that if they do come out with a wide variety of sensors, uh, seems like a big improvement to me for, for what I do. It actually has spaces for a lot of click-in sensors or add-ons, but as I said, I only see a few options right now. I hope they're going to add a real-time clock, a vibrate motor, but uh, looks like it's early on. The touchscreen is very clear. I'm in my basement. I have a GPS signal right now. The, the touch is pretty sensitive. That's not going to scroll. Here we go. Yeah, so you can see the, the touch works very well. Across the top, you've got this row of buttons. There's the power button, which you hold for five seconds to turn it on. There's a reset button. This user button is also the boot button. And uh, for Blackout Comms firmware, the only button I really use is this. It says 35. Uh, but that, if the screen is turned off, that will turn it back on. On the back, it's got this vented plate. They did add this clip that you could install. Maybe I would make a, a sturdier plate if I was going to mount a clip to it. That plastic isn't really strong and it kind of bends it a little bit. I think I'll probably design a 3D printable backing for this that, that is sturdier than, than what comes on it so that I can actually use the, the clip. It uh, it does stand easily with the, with the antenna facing up, which is nice. And, and I also found it fits in a cup holder. I like the T-Deck a lot, but it does not fit in a cup holder and it does not stand upright. That's one advantage the Helltech has. The USB charger is on the bottom, so if you have it standing upright like this, you're not going to be able to charge it. You'll have to lay it sideways or something. And speaking of charging, I'm finding with Blackout Comms, the battery is lasting about 20 hours per charge. This is for both the 868 and 915 ISM bands. As far as using it, um, that's going to be dependent on the firmware that you're using. Since I build Blackout Comms, the, that's how I'm using it. So when I want to wake it up, I just push this 35 button up here on the right, and it's ready to use. For the keyboard to be usable, uh, I have to have designed the UI sideways on this. So that's, uh, it, it seems like you would want it to be vertical like this, but then the keyboard would be so tiny, um, I went ahead and oriented it this way. If you want to use blackout comms on this device, it's real easy to install in just a couple of clicks. Since I ported the firmware to it, I wanted to see how it compares with other things. I'm already really familiar with the T-Deck and variations of it, so since I've done so much testing with it, what I wanted to do was compare these two side by side. They both seem to be designed to be really portable. The way that I did that, I created a, a private cluster, put them all in it, and I took this T-Beam 1 watt, mounted this to an antenna that I've got on my roof. I would have this T-Beam 1 watt running and drive various distances from the house and see what kind of signal strength I'm getting, where the T-Deck has a signal but the Helltech doesn't, or the other way, uh, how far each of them can transmit and receive from with this TB one lot on the other. This I'm at one of my main test spots here. I'm a few miles from the house. Here, I'll turn it sideways so you can read it. Yeah, so this is this is a pretty good signal. Uh, I'll double check here. I think I'm about three miles from the house. Um, yeah, 5.2 kilometers, so 
so that is pretty good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send a test message. Let's uh, see how that does. So yeah, about three and a half miles from the TB1 watt. And I'm going to compare that with the what I'm getting on the T-Deck as well. Yeah, it went instantly. Instant message confirmation. Well, this is good. Okay, I'm a little surprised about this. The uh, T-Deck Plus, much worse signal. I'm going to give it another minute to see if the uh, signal gets gets any better. The Haltech was getting about negative 80 RSSI, which is a lot better than negative 96. I'm going to try sending a test message here with the T-Deck. I expect it'll work even with the not so great RSSI, because I've done this test uh, a lot of times from here. So. It did finally get through. Uh, it took several tries, and I had to actually move a little bit. There must be some uh, a little bit of an obstruction that the Heltec was able to push and receive through, but the TDEC was not. So yeah, the TDEC still I can send and I can receive at three and a half miles as always. This is not the amped, but it took several tries today. Uh, everything's kind of wet, so maybe that had something to do with it but the Heltec had no issue so yeah the Heltec just sitting there on the dash uh, has a really good signal the um, I'm impressed with the uh, sensitivity of of this and the, the transmission power compared to the T-Deck somehow that seems to be a big step up I'm 10 kilometers, over 6 miles from the house. Okay, hi. Okay, it took me a couple of tries, but the message did go through. Yeah, you can see right there, 13.22, the time I sent and got back the confirmation. That's impressive. Well, I'm gonna take a look at the uh, T-Deck now. Okay, I'm gonna check out the neighbors here. Hey, I do have a signal there. Again, it's negative 99 for receiving. Definitely the Heltec is a lot more sensitive at, at receiving packets. There's no question about that. I do a lot of testing in the Walmart parking lot because there's a big field next to it, so. This is 11 and a half miles from the house. So I'm, I'm receiving from the TB1 lot at 11 and a half miles. I doubt if I can send without an amp on this thing. Phew. Okay. There it goes. I don't expect it to work. One thing that is nice, it uh, fits in a cup holder. <laughs> so for comparison, the uh, T-Deck doesn't, which may or may not matter to you. The Heltec is, has room to spare. So it looks like the Heltec and the T-Beam 1 watt are a good match. And if you had a T-Beam 1 watt at your house with a, a decent antenna on it, I've got a signal plus, I think it's an 86 inch antenna on my roof I can receive at 11 and a half miles and from the health tech I did get a successful instant send at over six miles that's pretty good especially the reception I have never gotten an unamp receive from here with a t-deck using anything less than 20 watts at the house so this has very good reception I have to say Heltec did a great job with this device. If you're interested in this type of technology and you can get one, I would go ahead and get one. I've already ordered quite a few more myself, and I think these are going to be a pretty hot item.